Okay, I've been looking through Amazon to try and find the most useful or useless snooker products. I'm going to check them out. I'm going to rate them and let you know what I think. I've got basic things here, lots of different stuff. It's going to be a bit of fun. Remember, if you enjoy this video, please like and please subscribe. Okay, let's start with this, this ball. In terms of ordering, it's this actually said a snooker practice ball. Um, as you can see, I don't know if it's going to work on a snooker table, so I presume this is for pool. Straight away, these red and white stripes put me off. It's, there's too much going on for me. There's also a lot of words here saying high right, right, uh, low right, low, low left. So obviously it's an aid in, in, in telling you how to, where you have to earn the cue ball. I don't think you're ever going to play a game with this ball because there's too much going on for me. Too, you know, the big stripes. You know, we, we sometimes we play with the, 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 the white with the red dots on it, and that's, that's fine. If you're lining up like that, you're lining your cue up. You can, you can put your tip on exactly that circle, which, as a beginner, I suppose might help you. It's no good for snooker. So, I mean, why they said it was a snooker practice ball, I don't know. Because it's, you cannot stun the ball. You stun it, and because it's bigger and heavier than a snooker ball, it doesn't stop, it keeps going. So if I had to give it marks out of five, overall, could even complicate things slightly. So I think overall I'll give it three out of five. Okay, next up is, um, well, it's a peculiar looking gadget. We've got three different rest heads. We've got a sort of low spider, we've got the traditional high spider, and we've got the traditional rest head. So, screw the rest head on, and then it's a bit like a selfie stick. You basically bring your own rest to the snooker club. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, yeah, I suppose you could I mean, you fit that. I mean, it's a bit light. I will say that it's a little bit flimsy, but at the end of the day, it's yeah, you mean like, I think that's way cool. I'm not sure what benefit this one does because I think you only need two. You need a spider and you need the normal wrist. But still, I mean, if you had that in your case, playing your mates at the club, I need to do rest and you went into your case. They'd say, what are you doing? And you produce this, I think, yeah. I think they'd be amazed. I will say it's a little bit flimsy, a bit light, but then you wouldn't want it too heavy. You're going to carry it around all the time. But the rest head's perfectly solid. Let's have a go at the spider. I mean, your mates might say to you, come on, what's, what's happening? You know, there's a spider there in the club. Why take, you know, unscrewing this, unscrewing that? But I mean, that is very cool. I'm impressed with that. I'm not really a gadget person. I think a lot of people would actually carry that around because Listen, you go to clubs and you never know what standard of rest they're going to be. Sometimes it's going to be in plastic rest, which are absolutely hopeless. Sometimes there's, um, these things are off. Sometimes there's only one rest to have your own. I think it's very cool. Five out of five. Okay, this gadget here is for sighting the cue ball. And it's part of my old friend Mark Williams Snooker's gadget collection. Um, he does a lot of products, actually. Pretty good. He's got his own chalk, balls. He's got his own everything. He's a bit of a Dell boy now. He's my old friend, Mark. This thing, you basically line the white line up with the bulk line. He's probably going to criticise me. I'll probably be getting this wrong. I'm not a coach. I mean, I presume the idea is to get your stance right, look along the line, and then get your stance, and then make sure everything, the line, the bulk line, the tip of the cue, everything is in line. Now, don't know, that's it. this must go this way. Again, he'll be shouting at this when he's w watching this. So I'm going to put the cue ball in here. So you're in line with everything. So then your cue can go right through and continue on that line. And you're striking the middle of the cue ball. Now, obviously, my middle ball striking is going to take a little bit of work. So I'm going to have to do a bit of practice with this. Pretty good gadget. I'm not sure what... I mean, we, I, I, I think on the channel, I've, I've obviously showed this one as well, where you're, you're still going along the line. Again, they'll probably be watching this shouting at say that's not the same thing at all. But I'm not tec technically adept enough at the workings of the snooker cue action to be able to explain this properly. So I would suggest going on to Mark Williams' website and Lee Walker, and there's probably a description of this. If you want to fine tune your cue action in sighting, I think it's a decent enough gadget. For me, it's all a bit complicated, um, and I don't understand it. I'll give it four out of five. I'll be generous because Mark's my old mate. I'm going to be generous, give it four out of five. I'm not giving it five out of five because I don't really understand it, and I don't really understand what the difference between doing that and doing this is. That's just me. I've got a simple snooker brain. 
BetterHelp is the paid partner of this video and they're on a mission to make starting therapy easier. I'm going to clear the colors as I tell you more about BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a platform where therapists and their clients can communicate more effectively and get the most out of therapy. Snooker is one of the most psychological sports there is. In that respect, mental health is so important for a snooker player. Starting therapy is easy with better help. Fill out a questionnaire and you'll be matched with a therapist within a couple of days. I mean, when I played snooker uh, in the 80s and 90s and, and, and the sort of 2000s, um, there wasn't really a lot talked about players' mental health, what they were going through psychologically when they were playing a sport. So it's very important nowadays to realize what's going on inside people's heads. Think of therapy as a tool for personal growth. It helps you better understand yourself, develop healthier habits, to learn effective ways to help with and cope with problems, leading to improved mental and emotional well-being. If you're struggling and think you would benefit from a therapy session, click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash Stephen Hendry and get 10% off your first month of therapy. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, uh, back in the day, I used to practice six hours a day and if I was wearing jeans, I used to put my chalk in my jean pocket after about, well, a few months, I'd have a massive rip here and end up with a massive hole in my jeans. Stuff like this came on the market. You used to get pouches and you just put them pouch on your belt or on your pocket and your chalk would go into the pouch. Then things got um, a bit fancier, like this gadget, which is from Omin Q's Chinese company. And basically your chalk fits into this little container here. It's quite snugly actually. There's actually an Allen key comes with it, so you can actually twist it to make sure the chalk's secure. Obviously it's magnetic, clips onto there. There's a clip here at the back. It's actually, the clip is so, so tight, but that clip either goes onto your belt, like so. There, you see? So basically, well, obviously the magnet's not very strong. Magnet could be stronger. Chalk your cue, playing a game of snooker, chalk your cue and it basically stays there like that. It's okay. Um, I actually prefer just having my chalk in my pocket. It feels natural to me as a snooker player just to go in my pocket. But I do see a lot of players using these things in practice. If I was to rate this, I don't think the magnet's strong enough. As you see, I dropped a chalk straight away. This clip is, it may loosen in time, but it's very, very tight. Yeah, if you want to save your jeans. Jeans are quite expensive these days, I suppose. You don't want to rip your jeans. Use this. I would give this three out of five. Okay, this product has probably, arguably been one of the biggest steps forward in snooker in recent times. It's a Talm chalk. It's incredible really what it's done. I was, when this first came out, I was one of the biggest skeptics ever. I thought chalk's chalk. I used triangle chalk all my career. Didn't see any, any problem with it. When this chalk came along, and famously Jimmy Bullard was on our channel, and uh, when I told him it was 15 quid a block, he couldn't believe it. What, that's 15 yeah. slabs? Yeah. I mean, it lasts a hell of a long time, let's put, let's put it this way. But for the serious snooker player, this is a game changer. And it has been a game changer because it's no kicks, no bounces off the cushion, no mess on the table. You could play the deepest screw back with this you've ever seen, and it won't leave any chalk marks. You could play for three, four hours. Like I, started, I practiced for a couple of hours, there wasn't a mark on the table. You know, you'd think the table had just been brushed and ironed. It is incredible. I would say the only downside of this is if you drop it. Because of its round, it can, it, I mean, you drop that and look, because it, it, it's round, it rolls. And it could be under the table, it could be at the other side of the room. I seen, uh, I think it was John Higgins in the last tournament at British Open, he dropped it and it was like, ended up the other side of the room. It was like, yeah, you don't want to drop this. Okay, let's. I'll give you a demonstration. Let's play a deep, a deep screw. You'll hardly see a mark on the cue ball. I mean, there's nothing there. If I was using triangle chalk, which I may have a bit of triangle chalk, nothing wrong with this, by the way. I used this my whole career. If players see their opponents using this, their heart sinks because they know there's going to be marks on the table. There's going to be marks on the cue ball. You know, marks on the cushions. So you're going to get bounces. Watch, let's watch the difference in the mark on the cloth. There you see. So we've got a close up on that. So you imagine playing snooker for three, four hours. Playing snooker. I mean, that, that is just all over the table. I mean, I must admit, when I look back at sort of 70s and 80s snooker and, and see chalk marks all over the table, I, I quite like it. It's quite old school. But in the modern game, the way the cloth reacts, you cannot have this. Every player now uses this. Judd and Ronnie were the only two that, that, that were sticking with the, the triangle, which I, I've not got a clue why. If you don't want kicks, why, why would you want to use that? Because kicks as a snooker player is probably the most annoying thing that can happen um, 
on a snooker table because it just ruins position, ruins the strike, ruins everything. I actually think Ronnie's still using that, whether it's out of stubbornness, he just doesn't want to change, doesn't want to be the same as everyone else. I don't know. I mean, Ronnie obviously strikes the cue ball this, uh, probably as well better than anyone else. So I do think when you strike the cue ball really well, you don't get as many kicks, but still there is kicks. And I know um, from speaking to the people that play with him that they hate the fact he's using this chalk because there's marks all over the table. Anyway, Ronnie apart, five out of five product. As I said, game changer in snooker. Okay, for $4.99, found this little snooker instructional book. Pamphlet, really, but it's for beginners, so it doesn't need to be, I mean, snooker doesn't need to be in-depth. Done by Stephen Curid, and it's got, you know, different things. It's got the rules of snooker, it's got choosing a snooker cue, uh, techniques, uh, why stance is important, holding a cue, how to break. Let's skip to practice, shall we? It says, if you want to make your mark in the world of snooker, you'll need to play a lot. Obviously, yeah, you have to, you know, practice is the most important thing. He also gives, um, tips, obviously keeping your head still is the most important thing, that's what I always say as well. Listen, I think the best way you can learn is how I learn, watch TV and watch the players and try and um, develop your own style and let's do what he says. Stephen Cured, let's get your stance right, solid stance, down to the shot, two waggles and keep your head still. When I was growing up, um, there was a couple of books. There was a Joe Davis book, um, Steve Davis brought out a book, but as I say, I learned from watching TV. I'd even record matches and then I'd look at the players playing the shots and then I'd go on the table and try and copy it, try and play the same shot. So I think there's no substitute for watching the top players playing. I think my rating out of five would be, I think I'd give this four actually. Yeah, you could, you could do a lot worse. Obviously, you want to learn snooker, you watch my channel. But if you want to read a book about it, if you're starting off, this is pretty good. Four to five. Okay, this little gadget, I'll tell you what it does in a minute, but there's only one player in the history of game that's ever used this and it's Mr. Steve Davis. He used to carry it in his waistcoat pocket. And it's quite a, quite a clever little gadget, actually. Um, I used to always think, what, what's Steve doing with this? Because what it's supposed to do, it's supposed to replace or give an alternative uh, to using a spider. So I'm gonna give you a demonstration how it works. So basically, you stick this on the rest, like so. It doesn't fit this rest properly, it's a bit loose. It would probably fit the, 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 the sort of tournament rest. But anyway, it's fine for example. So basically, put your cue, now this is moving because it doesn't fit this rest. So you can see what I'm doing here, but you're, you're not as high as you are with a spider. So you come into the cue ball from slightly lower. Now obviously if the cue ball was tight, you'd maybe want a little bit more height, but I think it's a pretty cool gadget. And I also, I also used to think, do I want to get one when Steve had them? I thought, do I, do I need that? But then I think, how many times you actually use the spider? But then again, the one time you use it, is that gonna help you play a shot that wins you a match? That one time, is that gonna be worth it? Um, I think yes. Obviously, I think before you buy it, you need to check out your snooker club, uh, what sort of thickness your rest heads are, because you can see this one's no good, because it's, um, it's too loose. Yeah, in terms of usefulness, I think it's a four out of five. Listen, it's no use in these rests, so it's a zero out of five, but I like it. Okay, next up is um, my cue towel, basically, Peridin who have been around since 1885. Um, make snooker tables, snooker cues, um, very famous company. It's a towel, it feels a bit weird. I, so I myself need, uh, when I have a towel, I need to damp half of it. So the sort of dampness, not too wet, but dampness takes away the sort of stickiness, the dirt or whatever. And then the dry, you obviously dry it, especially with a, with a maple because if you just leave it damp, um, it actually goes rough. Yeah, I mean, it's like if you want a proper snooker towel, it's fair enough. Do you like the color? Blue? Blue's all right. Any dish towel is going to do exactly the same thing. Any bar towel if you're in a club. Your cue just gets sticky. Your hands get sweaty. Sometimes there's chalk on the table. So your hands are getting dirty. You're putting your cue in your hands. So the dirt's transferring onto the cue. So yeah, you definitely need a towel. It's not that exciting. It's a blue towel, basically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a towel. You wipe your cue, towel's done its job. Five out of five. Snooker Poems, second edition, which means there was a first edition. There's a first edition out there somewhere. So obviously the first edition was so popular, they had to do a second one. It's got a picture of Ronnie in front of snowy mountains, which is, I don't know what the concept, I don't know what that's for. Yeah, should we read a couple? If you can't be great, be rubbish, and nothing in between. If you can't play like The Rocket, then play like Mr. Bean. How did this book get a second edition? There's one here. There you are. It's called their triangle, and the words are actually in the shape of a triangle. I could have been in an orchestra, but prefer snooker more. Hmm. King of the Crucible. That must be about me, surely. Page 18. Hendrikette winning and winning and winning. Seven times world champion. 
His rivals weren't grinning. His long pots were stunning. His pot success, great. 11 times he made a maximum break. 36 titles in ranking events. He'd win with attack or win with defense. Can't remember winning any with defense. A legend from Scotland with an MBE. He's one of the greatest that they'll ever be. Oh, thanks for that, George Stanworth. So I'm going to give this a rating of three out of five. It's entertaining, I suppose. I wonder if there'll be a third edition. Okay, we've got this little gadget here. It's a Q-tip shaper when you put a new tip on. It's basically a bit of red plastic. It's not the most uh, exciting piece of kit I've ever seen. It's got black sandpaper or emery paper. I don't know what you call it. They've got the flat side here. I've never put a tip on in my life. So basically you're shaping the tip. And because it's, it's kind of rounded in here, so it's for like, you know, getting that dome shape on the tip. Ooh, it's horrible. I mean, the sandpaper is so rough. It gives me goosebumps. It's like someone putting your nails down a blackboard. It's, it's horrible. It's pretty cheaply done. You're just as easy, I think, with a piece of sandpaper buy from a hardware shop. And, and it gives you, I think the normal sandpaper gives you more freedom. This is quite restrictive because it's, it's jammed in there. I mean, I don't, know, I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do it. But what happens when that sandpaper runs out? You know, then this is just throw it away. Because sandpaper in time will, will lose its, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sandpaperiness. It's not a word. I'd maybe give this a three out of five. It's not the only thing we managed to get from Amazon in terms of shaping your tip. We also got this one. I'd say a little bit more the right shape. Although you've got to hold, let's hold the, the sandpaper in. Do you have to hold the sand? So, well, already we see a fault. Now I've got to put my thumb in here to hold it in place. It's kind of like the same thing. I think it's maybe the shape of it I prefer. It comes with lots of things, but I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, why don't we just go to the shop? You could buy a bit of sandpaper, get some scissors and cut it into these little strips. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd rather just use, use the paper. Look at that. I'm going to give this, I'm going to give two basically because you just can't use it. You can't use it. Okay, the next, uh, $5.99. This is something that's very, very popular in China. Um, and actually in all pool, actually, a lot of pool players wear these. It's a glove, a snooker glove or a, a billiards glove. I've actually used this in China because it's in, in the clubs over there when it's really warm, it gets really sticky inside, inside busy clubs. So when you're playing pool, it obviously, well, you would never need a towel. Uh, to wipe your cue because it's it's always going to be smooth. Snooker looks a bit weird. Kyron Wilson um, actually used one last season. Had his little Warrior logo on it. I think he quickly ditched it. It doesn't give you that feel um, as a snooker player. I think pool's a bit different. You don't need that um, sort of deftness of touch you know, having snooker. So it's almost too slippy. Plus, let's be honest, it looks weird. Listen, if you live in a very hot country and the, and the clubs are so warm and you, yeah, absolutely essential actually to play billiard sports. But in the UK, not much call for it. It's something I've used playing pool in China. It's something I would never dream of, of using to play snooker. In terms of rating out of five, snooker I'm gonna give it a one out of five. Okay, for 10.99, you can get this little table and cue cleaning pack. Straight off the bat, no good on a full size table. This is for a small table or maybe a pool table because you can see this. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, you could maybe get away with it, but you'll see, oh. I mean, there's hair, bits of hair coming off it when I brush it. So that's, that's no good straight from the start. You need to brush it again to get the hairs that come off the brush. Or maybe that's what this is for. I thought this was for my t-shirt. I forgot some hairs on my t-shirt. I've never seen this used on a snooker table. As I say, I, I, maybe it's pool tables, your table at home, get rid of crumbs and stuff. I have no idea what <laughs> I mean, it's almost like a toothbrush or a hairbrush. But maybe for a small table, um, you know, you got a six, I mean, I started on a six by three and I definitely would have bought this to try and clean it properly. As I said, no good on a full size table. This little thing here, I actually wondered what it was and it is a cue cleaner. Now, I'm not going to use it on my cue. I have got another cue here somewhere, but basically you just, and it's, yeah. That feels right actually, but so it actually feels quite smooth. So inside the rough bit, whether it's like almost like it's not sandpaper, obviously, but whether it's actually just taking a little bit off your cue, like very, very, very little, um, that actually does feel smoother. So and it's quite handy. It's quite small. Um, you could keep this in your case and imagine your snooker case as a as a joint purchase at 10.99. I'd say it's as I say for a small table at home four out of five. If you want to uh, get your three-year-old or four-year-old into snooker very very early, you're probably going to be looking at something like this. It's I mean how about what is that? 
about a foot and a half long. It comes with a set of the smallest little pool balls you've ever seen. Yeah, let's uh, put them in a little triangle. I mean, it's probably so you could actually have this in your office, I suppose. You're a bit bored in the office, maybe. Play a bit of snooker. Don't know if you even need to chalk the cue. I mean, I put one off the break. Actually, forget three and four-year-olds. I think if you're in an office and you're bored, I mean, what? That's this is brilliant. Let's practice. Uh, let's see, maybe a bit of a long pot here. Oh, I missed. Got a bit of side. Unwanted side. <laughs> I think it's good fun. Whether you're three years old or 53 years old in an office. I'm going to give that four out of five for entertainment value. You could probably fit it in your briefcase. Play in a train, play in a plane, play anywhere. Mm -hmm.